what would they say? Before there was Iowa City, before there was Provincetown, before there was Greece, France, Yugoslavia, San Antonio, Berkeley, Ann Arbor, even before there was Mexico, there was Chicago. Sandra Cisneros was born five days before Christmas, 1954, in a blue-collar Chicago neighborhood, teeming with myriad languages and cultures. Her father was an upholsterer, and her mother responsible for the upbringing of six children, all boys except Sandra. The family toggled between Mexico and Chicago throughout her young life. The transient nature of her upbringing caused her to feel always like an outsider. This is long before Sandra would write her first poem, much less delight readers with her stories and novels and essays, including fictionalized accounts of a lonely, awkward girl striving for some kind of belonging and security in a world that seemed disinclined to grant it. Now, of course, Sandra's teachers would say, wow, she has captured a long list of prestigious awards, including NEA fellowships, a MacArthur Fellowship, and the Penn Center USA Literary Award. She has been awarded several honorary doctorates. She even received a National Medal of the Arts from President Barack Obama. Sandra Cisner. The 2015 National Medal of Arts to Sandra Cisneros for enriching the American narrative. Through her novels, short stories, and poetry, she explores issues of race, class, and gender through the lives of ordinary people straddling multiple cultures. As an educator, she has deepened our understanding of American identity. As a feminist, activist, teacher, and mentor, Sandra has been a leading light to Latinx and young adults throughout the world praising her in many languages, but more so being struck inside her pages and words with the notion that they too will find a path. Chicago had gotten her so far, but she felt the need to leave the city to finish what would come to be considered one of the single most cherished coming-of-age stories ever written. The road to her current home in San Miguel de Allende was long and winding. Along the way, she created literature as diverse as her landscapes. Chicago was the time of bad boys, and in part, the house on Mango Street. Nine books were to follow, more poetry, more stories, children's books, essays, and the big glorious novel, Caramelo. All those tremendous books speak for themselves. She left Chicago as a woman seeking something to become a woman who others seek. Her place in the great tradition of Chicago storytelling is secure. <laughs>